This is macroeconomics, and we are doing the first part of Chapter 12, Production and Growth. At the beginning of your chapter, your author talks about the rule of 70. And I've heard it before, uh, I learned it in finance, as the rule of 72. And this is a really useful rule in approximating how long it will take, how many years it will take for your money to double. And your author's talking about it here um, because if all you need is the growth rate, all you, the only piece of information that you need is the growth rate, and um, you use that information, you take 72, divide it by the growth rate, and that tells you how long it'll take for your money to double. And your author's applying it here in this chapter to GDP. For a country's income, we can figure out how long it'll take for that income to double just based on their growth rate. So I'm going to come over here and just show you on the document camera a couple of examples. Okay. You might recall that our goal of economic growth, of what we try to get GDP to increase, from period to period is 3%. So what we can do is take 72, divide by 3%. All you need to know is the growth rate, like I said. And that is 24. If our economy is growing at a growth rate of 3%, that means in 24 years our level of GDP will double. Now in countries like China and India, they've seen much higher rates of growth than that 3%. So if an economy is growing at 9%, their GDP is increasing at 9%, take 72 divided by 9, that's 8 years. And you can see how much time you would save if you had just had a higher growth rate. Again, you can apply this to GDP, and you can apply this to, um, to yourself when you're investing money. We'll talk a little bit more about that in Chapter 14 when we talk about the stock market, but when you're investing your money at a higher rate of growth, it doesn't matter what total we're talking about. Um, and if we're talking about GDP, if we're talking about income, a lump sum of money that you're investing just as an individual, this is a, a helpful rule that helps you approximate about how many years it will take for your money to double. And you can see that countries that can manage a higher rate of growth can, can see their GDP or their income for their country double faster. Okay, we know that we measure economic growth with GDP, but even better than just regular GDP is real GDP, so adjusted for inflation, and then even better than that would be real GDP per person or per capita. And this gives us a good idea of the living standard of a particular country. Now we've seen that real GDP per person, you know, over this period from 1890 to the late 2000s, has been very different for very uh, for various countries. And you can see the United States is right there, about in the middle there. And what causes? these differences in growth experiences. Why do some countries grow faster and slower? Why are there different standards of living across different countries? We've talked about this before in chapter one. The one word answer is productivity. Okay, basically productivity, the definition of it is output per unit of input. How many goods and services can you make from each unit of input? For example, labor. And it's so important because it determines if a country is able to make more goods and services, that's higher income, that's more resources for, uh, for that country, for the citizens in that country. All right, so productivity is so important. What determines how pr productive a country is? There are four determinants that your, your author talks about. Remember, a determinant is a fancy word for something that changes or influences productivity. 
Okay, the first determinant of productivity is physical capital. We've talked about physical capital before, machinery, equipment, of course. The more machinery equipment that you have, the more goods and services you're going to be able to make. The second determinant of productivity is human capital. So you're here in at school, in class, learning knowledge. When you start working, they'll probably train you. That's on the job training. All of that um, is referred to as human capital. Remember, we, with physical capital, when we were first talking about in the investment category of GDP, we talked about how important it was for firms and businesses to uh, be replacing machinery and equipment at a rate that's faster then it was depreciating. And as you use machinery and equipment, it'll wear out and it, and it will depreciate. And human capital can depreciate as well. And that's why it's important for your professors, for your doctors to attend professional development activities where they can be keeping up with the research and and new knowledge in their field. The third, third determinant of productivity is natural resources. Your author mentions renewable natural resources and non-renewable natural resources. So forests and trees, that might be an example of a renewable one where we can replant some of those trees. A non-renewable resource, uh, your author gave the example of oil. So these things are provided by nature and the fourth one is technological knowledge. The fourth determinant is technological knowledge. So better, for example, um, better methods of farming, better equipment, um, better genetically engineered seeds, that's all considered better ways of uh, doing things, better ways of producing goods and services. And that is the end of the first section of chapter 12.